South African women are tough. We resist, persist and overcome whether it's work, at home or at play. In this segment, we talk to Doreen and Caroline about success, balance and persistence. Doreen Kekana, Large Enterprise ISR. Carolyn Arnold, Legal Counsel for Dell EMC, South African SADC. Doreen, maybe we can start with you. You had a, you had a, a, a tough upbringing and um, some challenges during your, your studies years that you've managed to overcome and, and, and to get to where you are today. Perhaps you can talk us through your journey. My upbringing, in short, I can say it was tough. I've, I've grown up in a family of seven children. Yeah. Me being the sixth one. Wow. So you can imagine um, the coming down of attention. Literally, I'm the last one. Then from then, I, have, I had to tell myself that I must just do something different. I must just do something to change my life. Because looking at things back then, there was no hope at all. And then I've had to choose at that time it's either I would sit back and feel sorry for myself for the rest of my life, or I had to take a decision that's going to change my life for the better. And then I analyzed the situation, and then I came up with the decision that I think education is the only thing that's going to take me out of the cycle, that's going to break the pattern. And then I've decided to focus on my education. Of course, back then I didn't know what the future had in store for me. Uh, I just thought to myself, because education, no one can actually take it away from you. It's something that I'm gonna own, like, forever. For sure. Then, yes, and then I, I just decided, no, I'll focus on education, and then, because I was in grade nine when my mom passed on, then I focused on education. I studied, when, after my matric, I couldn't get to varsity. And then I had to stay back at home. Still, it was tough because I had to keep my mind consistent. I had to put my eyes on the prize. And then the following year, I went on to UNISA. But unfortunately, by then, I was already pregnant. But I told myself, I'm going to get there no matter what it takes. It was difficult, but it's fulfilling. And looking back now, I never cry. I actually smile because I think I made it. I know I haven't made it big, but I think I made it. For my peers, uh, I have made it. No, for sure. That's, a, that's an amazing story. So. Carolyn, you've been uh, dealing with challenges of a slightly different uh, yeah, sort. Yeah, when obviously listening to Doreen, it's um, nothing in comparison. Mine were obviously self-induced. But I also think it's partly due to, it, it's partly about maintaining your sanity when you're working and when you have young children. And so my decision was to um, also get involved in sport. I was very lucky when we were overseas, my children were born overseas and um, I was able to um, do part-time work while my children were young. But then when we came back, my children were a little bit older and I felt it was time to get back into the sport. But at the same time, um, obviously I was working as well and so there are different challenges to maintaining that kind of structure in your day and it does boil down to creating structure um, in order to fit it all in um, and I, I guess that's just the most important thing but at the end of the day you don't feel like you're losing out on any element of your own life because you are still able to be with your children uh, in the afternoons you are still able to further your career and at the same time you're able to get involved in sport that previously I had been involved in before children so I didn't have regrets in any in any form and I must say that working at Dell at which time I was um, they are fantastic in terms of work-life balance and at the end of the day no matter how you structured your day as long as you got the work done um, it was up to you how you did it, right. which was fantastic. So it enabled it as well. And how did you get involved in technology? So for me, being in, in tech is it's, it's the most rewarding journey. It, I mean, like, you get to be part of the change that's happening every day. You get to be involved with 
or the trends that's happening currently. I mean, you also have to, I mean, you get to advise someone. You get to give someone your trusted advice based on technology, based on what you think. You actually get to change the way they do their business on a daily basis. So you're actually changing um, someone's organization, making it a better place to be. Because now, if you're telling them about technologies that we have here in Dell, you, like you are enlightening them, you're making their life easier at work. So for me, it, it has been a rewarding journey. It has been a rewarding journey, and I am very grateful that I ended up in this industry. That sounds amazing. Back to you on um, the Apps Cape Epic. Yes. And women in tech and the fact that there's very few women in cycling and in tech. And what do we need to be doing as women perhaps to change that? What does the industry need to be doing to change yeah, that? Yeah, it was very interesting when I did the AppScape Epic. And uh, because it was the second time that I did it when I entered as a ladies team that I realized just how few women actually do the AppScape Epic. And there was, I think in that year, about 100 of the 1,000 odd participants were women. Yeah. And I realized then that it's, it's obviously the, the Epic is a rather um, a technical event and that's what scares women off from doing it. But while riding it, I realized how many men we were sitting behind while we were riding the tracks. So they too were not as skilled on the technical stuff, yet they, were, they weren't scared to go out there and put themselves out there and go ride it. And I realized then that, this, that women are so reserved um, and they hold back, so they would never put themselves in that situation. And when I came back after that, I actually did a couple of talks at Dell to women, well actually it was to women and men, just to say that women are reserved and they should really put themselves out there a lot more because if you take a woman who is as equally skilled as a man and in a job situation where they've both got perhaps 80% of the skills required for a job, the man will always go for it and the woman will hold back. And we shouldn't. As women, we should really put ourselves out there a lot more.